Since last year, Supreme Master Ching Hai graciously allowed our association members to gather for international seminars. They were joyous occasions as Master and Disciples reunited to meditate and pray for peace. During our visit to meet with our association members, Supreme Master Ching Hai also spoke of the teachings of past masters and answered the spiritual questions of fellow initiates. Throughout the ages, compassionate, enlightened masters have urged people to surrender to the greater universal power by seeking the divine within, from which all other goodness and happiness follow. This message was echoed again in Supreme Master Ching Hai's seven-part discussion, The Higher Duty of Enlightened Masters, with our association members on December 15, 2008. Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit www.godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. In this uh, letter, what he means, he just make you happy. Yeah? He just do what he can to help you. Understand or not, he don't care to explain it to you. But maybe other people will point it out to you and say, Look, if it's not for the Master, you see, she did that, she did that to me also, and that is how it happened, and the result is fantastic. So same in your case, for example. Or sometimes in the whole family, the non-initiate are the one who saw the Master doing a miracle <laughs> and tell the initiated <laughs> it happens. Or sometimes your child four or five years old, and tell you, Master, Master, come in, Master, come in, Mom. Where? Where's the Master? There she's standing there smiling at you. Really? Really? Where? Where? <laughs> it happened, right? I heard that all the time, yes. Or sometimes the visitor came, and then you on and on about your Master, yeah, how miraculous the Master is, and she can appear anywhere, anytime, you know, Master is omnipresent and all that. And then your friend just fix in one corner and, and keep looking, and you say, what are you looking at? They say, your master is here. <laughs> and the friend, pure-hearted, just saw it immediately. Sometimes a friend or acquaintance or children have a vision to tell you something, because the mind is too hard. Yeah, so somebody else has to be a messenger. Yes, never mind, it's okay, it's fun also. By the way, for that person to also to believe master as well, you know? So it's a one... One task, but two job done. All right. Because he says, these things are too foreign to your customary thought. Yes? So you don't know much about it. So you don't recognize them. Of course, in this world, everything done, we have to see it with our own eyes, you know? Then we know it's done. And that person do it. If you ask the electrician to come fix your light bulb and it bright again, you say, oh, yeah, he fixed it. Yes? And if uh, your car broke down and the mechanic come and fix it and your car run against it, oh, the mechanic fix it, then it's as obvious and has proof. But the master does many things without proof, you see? And if you don't have your wisdom eye very wide open, difficult to recognize. Because it's not the same like the doing of this world, not all the time. If you ask the master to stop the car while it is sliding toward the pit and it stopped right away, then maybe you understand it, because it hasn't been able to stop before and the brake doesn't work and the ice is so slippery that you're going to fall into the pit if the car doesn't stop. And if you ask the master to stop and it stops, then you believe a little, yes. And after three, four times, then you believe a little more. <laughs> and then if many other things happen also in your life, then you begin to believe more in the master who takes care of you. But not everything as obvious as that, you see? The Master even does many things without you asking. Yeah. Change your life, you know, make you more comfortable and help you in many ways, but don't take account to it and nobody see it, you see, and not even you see it. Yes, okay, so that's what he meant. It's good that I have chose this, you know, I haven't read the whole story. I just opened one. And I see now that I'm dead, I thought, oh, interesting. <laughs> so, okay, okay, <laughs> let's read it, you know. So I'm also the first time reading it, just like you, the first one hearing it. And it turns out it's a very interesting story, yeah. You know, it's a story that we could identify with, right? Yeah, because we have similar experience, right? Yes. All right. 
Okay, the last stanza. <laughs> Translation too late, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember when we have bigger uh, meditation place, you know, like Taiwan or Korea or somewhere bigger, you know, and uh, there were laughter like waves, you know. <laughs> the English person laughed first, and then the Korean, and then the Chinese, then the Vietnamese, <laughs> and the Mexican, and the Spanish, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> because it depends on how fast the translation. translation. Yes, yes. <laughs> and they're just laughing one after another like this. <laughs> it's cute. Because some of the language are translation very long, long-winded sentences, you know. <laughs> Like uh, in some language, one word is good enough. In other languages, maybe you have to use three, four, five words for that. Yeah. What is your language? Espanol. Espanol. Okay, okay. Uh, well, Espanol is already simple, yes. Some languages are very long. Yeah, for example, one, one time I was in Hungary, and whenever I go out, and if I need translation, I wait forever for one sentence, you know. I say, I say, so short. Why it took so long to translate, you know? Not only the sentence, translation is long, the words are long also, you know? In, in English, uh, maybe some word only written one syllable or two syllables. And in the same word in Hungary, it written like ten syllables, you know? The whole word is long also. Yes, all the things. <laughs> and re- remember the joke we had before? Japanese translation? There were foreigner who was speaking something, and then the, there is a translation, the guy tore, and, and then after the guest spoke a lot, a lot, a lot, you know, the whole story, and other people laugh already. So, and the Japanese say to them, uh, the guest just told some jokes, so now please clap your hand and laugh. <laughs> Lost in translation. <laughs> Remember that film? It is truly like that sometimes. Remember in the film Lost in Translation, the guy talks a lot, a lot, a lot, and the translator just say, more intensity, just look, more intensity. (laughs) Okay, now we go to the last stanza. Your tragedy is that while waiting for me to secure miracles and make perceptible changes in you, you have invented miracles which I did not perform. (laughs) <laughs> and have developed a loyalty to me which is of no value at all. Anybody? Yes, for well, some disciple they expect something from the Master and yes. so long and they begin to see illusion, miracle, and then they uh, use that and then uh, say that, oh, this is what Master do. For mm. example, sometimes they say, in the Master, tell me this. Mm. They invented it, and they say, in the, say, in the Master, or Master, tell me that yes. you have to do this. Yes, 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 it's yeah. true. Because yes. they want the Master to do that, and yes. the Master did not do it because it's not proper. But they desire to control others or to show that Master uh, did that uh, to, to please his own ego. Yeah, and he told people, you know, I had a week, 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 that you must have told me you must do that, you must do this. And force others, you know, in confusion, to do what he please, to please his ego, yeah. And also to uh, let people know that he is something, he has inner master connection, you know, which he did not, yes. Most often, the people who are in a lower level invent this kind of story, yes. And how about, uh, and have developed a loyalty to me, which is of no value at all? That is just a hypocrite. Yeah? Just a, like, for example, seeing Master and want to show that uh, I am very faithful to Master, do all kind of things, but maybe that is not valuable because it's not helpful at all. Mm. Not true not devotion. Not true devotion. Yes, yes, yes. Just want to show people, yeah, that uh, he is very devoted, yes, so that he earned more respect and trust from other disciples, or even more followers even. No, that person, he must be one with the Master, because look at how he, look at Master, and 
Oh, he always tried to sit in the front to see Master and always run where Master goes. The people who run in genuine devotion, that's different, yeah? But some people don't have that genuine devotion within themselves and they just do it. I do even more than the real <laughs> devoted disciple, yeah? To catch attention, yes. To be better than, more devoted than anybody else so that everybody thinks, oh, he's really a real practitioner. He's a real devoted person. I can trust that guy because he loves the Master so much. That is hypocrite, correct? Why? Because he knows anybody who loves the Master loves the person also who loves the Master. Yes. Yes. So if you profess or you show like you love Master so much, then you endear yourself to other person who truly loves the Master because she or he thinks he's the same. Oh, he also loves Master so much, so I love him so much. He's a trustworthy person. He's truly a Master disciple because the real devoted disciple is really devoted and loves Master. So he respects and loves anybody who is like him or her because she's so innocent. He's really loved the Master and so benefit from it and from the love for the Master and feel good about it. So if he see another one same like him or her, he, he endear himself to her because he's so pure, he thinks that person is the same, you know, so devoted and so good. That is some hypocrite, yes. My God, the Master knows everything, he? Eh? Yeah, he knows everything. You know all that, huh? Yes. It's a pity, you know, that's why I have told you, if you go to a group meditation, it is because it's important to be in the company of like-minded Saints, you have support, you have affection, you have true love, and you have true devotion to higher ideal together, you know? And if for that reason, we can work miracles, yes? We can even change the world, we can ask people to be vegetarian and all that, because we work together in a uniform, you see? United, strong, we will be strong. True devotion is very elevating, very soothing for both, for the Master and for the disciples. But the fake devotion or the low, motiv- lowly motivated devotion is very terrible, it's suffocating, it's very, very burdensome. Make sure your heart is pure and your devotion is genuine. You don't have to be devoted, but if you are, be genuine, okay? <laughs> and if you're not devoted, try to learn, okay? Try to learn to be more humble, more spiritually uh, motivated. It would be uh, better for you and the benefit would be longer lasting. Yes? Okay? Hmm. It's been a pleasure to have your wise company for today's episode of Between Master and Disciples. Join us again tomorrow for part six of The Higher Duty of Enlightened Masters. Healthy Living is coming up next after Noteworthy News. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Farewell for now. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash BMD.